God is good Ooh. all the time. Yeah. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. God oh, is good. That's got some groove to it right there now. Woo! All the time. Welcome to the ATL. Uh, boy, I am so appreciative and humbled. There's Scotty and Scott and uh, my good friend Lee in the rear and just so many incredible looking people. Some great faces, uh, some good looking folks, some not so good looking folks <laughs> like me, but we manage. Uh, one Life is an amazing organization. Yeah, uh, give yourselves a hand for being a part of something tremendous. And again, when Scotty calls on me to come and be a part of an academy or any event, I'm, I'm always working to make my schedule work so I can be a part of it. Uh, certainly, I appreciate you, Scotty, mentioning uh, some of my uh, achievements. Uh, I have a lot of them. <laughs> you know, you mentioned uh, uh, the bench press. You know, the, 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 this awesome combine has happened and the draft is around the corner. Amazingly, you know, I participated in both of those events and, and the bench press was, in fact, one of my favorite events because I could bench really good. You put it up there, 225 pounds, I could rep that thing 47 times. You know, I could do that, you know. And so I, I have a son who I love incredibly. I do. And all of those who know me here know uh, my stories with Dustin. And Dustin's about 6'2", 240, plays linebacker and all of those things, a good college football player. And, uh, and so I said, he's gotten bigger than I am and he's strong, but I said, so I probably need to stay in the gym and keep lifting, keep working out. You never know. And so, uh, one day he got all spritey <laughs> and, uh, and looked at me uh, really interestingly. <laughs> I came home from work and he and his mother had had a, a powwow. And, uh, and my wife, she just looks at him and she just says, and she said, you know, he raised his, his, his levels, his octave levels, uh, beyond what I am comfortable with. And I say, okay. And uh, well, tell him I, I like to have, meet with him when I get home. <laughs> and so I get home and I, I see him and I said, come here, size him up, look at him. And he looks at me and I, I say, you good looking fella. You got muscles everywhere, man. And but your mother called me and told me something interestingly that uh, you are, uh, you are, uh, you know, spoke back to her in an in a, just an inappropriate manner. I don't think I've ever seen that out of you. I said, listen here. I said there's but one alpha male around here. <laughs> and I said to him, you might lift and bench all of that weight. I said, look at your old man. I got a little bit belly now. I got, I'm not as fast as I used to be. My knees are a little tender. I said, but I love that woman back there. And you got a real problem. <laughs> I said, I love you, but I ain't gonna ever love you more than I love her. I said, you know why? Because one day you're gonna grow up and leave me. <laughs> me and her gonna hang around a while. So I said to him in closure, I said, listen, boy, I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm good once as I ever was. <laughs> yeah. I've never had to have those conversations with him again. Uh, he learned quickly on that one. That's for sure. You know, if I'm anything, I'm two things. I'm a sweater and a spitter. And uh, stuff gonna fly everywhere. I only have so many minutes with you, so I wanna stay on schedule. But I've gotta get you involved. Get out of your seats, everybody stand to their feet. This is an interactive exercise here now. I've gotta get you involved. Very, very important. 
We're a team, one life, one team, one unit, one organization. Hey, we're working together. We're linked up together. You know, we're only as strong as our weakest link. And so we've got to make sure we have no weak links in the chain. We've got to be able to operate at high levels. We've got to be able to move quickly. We've got to be able to listen well. We've got to interpret well. We've got to be able to be on the same page. Synchronicity, timing, power, energy. We've got to be able to make sure that we're all together. These few days that we're here, we want to make sure we validate some things, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want to find out how can you clap really good. I'm going to give you a number. You give me that many claps. Now, here's the secret. If you can't keep up, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> Fun stuff. You've got to have volume. Got to be loud. They ought to hear you on the other side of the hotel. One life's in town. You know, when I was in, in playing pro football, the one thing I love is going on the road because it's you against the world. That's what it is. You're up against 90,000 screaming fans on the road. They're booing you. I remember walking into Cleveland to play the Browns, I was a rookie. Woo! Cleveland wasn't bad back then now. <laughs> Once upon a time, you did win some games. <laughs> I was a rookie and I was starting my first game against the Browns and they had the dog pound, barking and screaming. And man, I'm telling you right now, I walked out that tunnel, looked up at that crowd, my eyes got that big. <laughs> Woo! You know, I mean, it was, it was on, you know, it was on. So I had to at least act like I was confident or, or actually be really, really confident. But I can tell you this, when you walk into a stadium on the road, you walk in there with confidence, you go in there screaming and yelling, kick the door down and say, where is the son of a gun? You know, that's the way you walk into the road. That's the way you drive and you travel when you go and make your, your appointments. You walk through that with confidence because of real important reasons. You don't ever go on the road concerned, intimidated, you know, pushed around. You know your craft. You're confident in what you are doing. You trust your training. Someone once said, you never rise to the occasion. You default to your level of training. You don't ever just show up and show out. You are the result of the work you put in. Well, can you keep up with this? I'm going to give you a number. You give me that many claps. We're going to go up. We're going to come down. I've got two more points. I'm done. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, sir. I don't know. Some folks' hands all down here to the side. They're just, you know, I mean, my gosh. You gotta, you gotta be in ready position is what you gotta be. You know, I do this, and by the time we're done, your hands, if you do it properly, ooh, they're gonna be red. I'm telling you, they are. Are you ready for it? Oh, this ought to be a beautiful thing. One life, one family, one thing, one unit. Here we go. One. Oh my God, Scotty, fire everybody. Fire, fire. One. Almost. You, you did one of those kind of unique claps. You're going to be awfully late if you have to go way up here. One, two, three. You know, I thought only football teams can do this. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, let's see if you're able to send those, to make those, those neurons and those motor units move and get to where you got to be. To, you know, they say the faster things move, you know, the, the, the harder it is to maintain that consistency. The faster I turn it up, can you stay with me? One, two, three, four, five. We might have slight delay over here, but not bad. I'm only going to take you up to seven, then I'm going to bring you back down. Six, seven. Seven. 
seven, six, five, four, three, two. <laughs> they got all excited, Scotty. Hey, you gotta get the play first. <laughs> great job. Have a seat. Give yourselves a hand. That's awesome. That is awesome. Woo! Awesome. When I was drafted, I, um, I had two realities that hit me right in the face, and then I had three things I needed to know, and I'm going to leave you with those quickly. And I know in this room, there are realities that you face on an everyday basis, and there are things that I know you need to know. Someone once said, the more you know. And uh, my first reality when I got to the NFL, Scotty and Scott, was that I realized I wasn't in college anymore. I wasn't. It was an adult world. And the amateurism that I experienced had expired. It was gone. It was big boy business. And uh, it's such a big boy business that sometimes you get your feelings hurt. And so you couldn't wear your feelings on your sleeves. You got to handle rejection well. There are two occasions I'm on my way to San Francisco, play the 49ers, and I got my feelings hurt because I was reminded that it's a business more than it is anything else. And I'm on my way to San Francisco. I'm leading the league in rushing. Barry Sanders is second. Emmett Smith is third. I get to San Francisco. The unpredictable, what you can't see coming, and how do you manage it? And I'm on the plane, and Bill Polian, our general manager, comes to me and says, we got a multi-year contract ready for you when you get back to Carolina. Millions of dollars. I'm leading the league in rushing. I go, we go out, we beat San Francisco. The last minute and 40 seconds in the game, I'm running the clock out. Left tackle, right tackle, giving me the ball, we're burning the clock. I get hit and get spawned and my left knee gets caught. Realities. Fall down and I'm lying on my back and I know what's wrong, but I don't want, it, I don't want to accept it. I get back on that same plane, fly back home to Carolina. They examined me, checked me out, and later they came and said, ah, uh, I think we're gonna go in a different direction. Some realities. I remember a funny one. Joe Pendry, I had just ran for 158 yards against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and uh, we were in practice the next Monday. And uh, you know, it's easy to celebrate your successes, and you should. You should celebrate your accomplishments daily. And well, we're in practice getting ready for the next week's game. I, I led the league in rushing up to that point, just came off a 150 some yard game. And Joe Pendry, I'm laughing and joking with some of the guys. I'm a grown man now. And he's coordinating the offense. And man, he ripped me one. You can't even begin. I, you know what? I'll, I would go right to hell if I said to you what he said to me. <laughs> he ripped me one like you've never seen. And it taught me something. Don't ever rest on your success. Don't ever rest on your success. And as much as I was embarrassed and humiliated, he was teaching me something. You're in the National Football League. What you did last Sunday happens every week. Get a grip. 
We can't afford to let you think you've reached your potential. Because the moment you begin to think you're something, that's when you're going to be nothing. Quickly brought me to a reality that I never thought was possible. They play for money, that's reality number two. They play for money, they play for mortgages, and they pray for, you know, contracts, second and third contracts. And you know, nobody's really your friend, they'll tell you that. But that's what they play for. Which means you better bring your A game every day, you bring your A game. And once you discover what motivates you, and that was my secret, I discovered what motivated me. Find what motivates you, what drives you, Scotty said earlier, what gets you up and gets you going. Motivation is about what you want. Inspiration is about what you believe. And when you bring those two together, you have dynamo. Motivation and inspiration. I've got my eyes set on a goal, an objective. I've got numbers I want to meet. I've got goals I want to accomplish. And I've got something driving me to do it. And so motivation is all about what I want. There are things that I want in this life. I do. I have a greater life waiting on me beyond this life. But in the meantime, that I'm down here with you jokers. <laughs> Jeez. There are some things here I want also. And there's nothing wrong with wanting things. But I learned a long time ago, and I teach this to my children, don't ever, ever, ever expect anybody to give you anything. You won't like it anyway. Work for what you want. Be motivated. Find your motivator. And then find something you believe in. And we all believe in different things, and that's your inspiration. And then there were three things you better know. And there were three things I knew when I played. I knew what qualified me. So if I'm gonna play in big boy football and be a part of this big boy experience, I knew what qualified me. I have never gotten up in a morning questioning whether or not I can handle it. Whether or not I can do it. I felt when I played pro ball, I had the measurables. I was 6'1", 230 pounds. I could run 4'3", 5". In the 40, I could stop on a dime and change direction. I could run past people, run over people. I physically can dish out punishment, but I could take it too. I said, I'm here for a reason, and if I'm on this team, I'm obviously qualified to be here. So I never get up in the morning worried about questioning whether or not I belong. I do. I'm a part of this experience, so I don't ever question that. I don't question it. I question it one time. <laughs> okay. It's a guy named Barry Sanders I played with. <laughs> Uh, I got to Detroit and the Lions, and now, uh, and I'm excited to go and compete and win the job and all of those kinds of things, and I've not seen the great Barry Sanders as of yet. Of course, I've watched much film on him, and I said to myself, oh, shoot, I'm not afraid of him. I can handle this. I'm going to get some playing time. I'm going to get on the field. He's a future Hall of Famer, but I can hold my own. So one time I questioned my qualifications. And we get to the field, and they give Barry Sanders the ball. And they got him surrounded. They have four or five guys around him. And boy, he had the ability to start and stop faster than anybody. Oh, oh. He can go, he can come back and go around, he can stop, he can peek, he can do all these things. He gets you in one-on-one -on -one space, you're dead. <laughs> and I thought that convinced me, but it didn't. I hadn't seen him in a game yet. We played a game against the Falcons. He makes a one-yard run. Greatest one-yard run you'll ever see. I've never seen anything like it. 
I'm on the sidelines. He makes this run, gets one yard, but the Falcons are running all over the place, trying to get him down. Unbelievable. He comes back to the sidelines and sits down, and we all just look at him. Whoo! And I said to myself one thing, I'm not qualified. <laughs> so all the time I didn't feel qualified, my God. Unbelievable, you know. So, so the next one is no, uh, what challenges you? Physical and mental mobility, I always say, you know, they say it's about the X's and O's, and they say, know those X's and O's. The only problem I had in being challenged in the National Football League that's quite different from being challenged, you know, in college or high school, and I believe that every job is a challenge. You should see it that way. You should see it as your next Mount Everest that you're going to climb. You should see it as being able to go from 17,000 feet to 29,000 feet uh, up there where the summit is. And everybody ought to get up every morning looking to climb an Everest. You don't have an Everest to climb when you get out of bed. You ought to just go back to sleep. And your Everest might be different than mine. Your Everest might be 19,000 feet. Mine might be 22. But every day you get up, look to climb your Everest and summit your Everest. Hmm. I always say, the difference in the X's and O's in high school and the X's and O's in college and the X's and O's in the NFL is that the X's and O's in the NFL move a whole lot quicker. <laughs> That's the difference. They move a whole lot quicker and with a whole lot more intent, intentionality behind them. And so I learned that that was going to be my challenge is could I move like they moved? And so what happened was is competition is a great thing. It's great to compete because it brings out the best in you. You'll never know how good you are until you've competed with someone that's as good as you are better. My son again, he was in middle school and I'm sitting up on a hill watching him practice a little skinny string being, <laughs> you know the <this> story. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and this linebacker who's a starter, weighs 230 pounds, and they made my son was a ninth grader, made him a running back, a little skinny guy, and they gave him the ball. He came through the line of scrimmage with the ninth graders, and the varsity linebacker hit him. Wow! I mean, lit him up. <laughs> Almost broke him in pieces. Oh my God, that can't be my son. <laughs> sure enough, they did. Well, that wasn't the amazing thing. I expected that. 230 pound linebacker, senior in high school, all conference, and then there's this little bit of skinny ninth grader, you know, who can't compete with this guy that they put him up against. I said, why did coach put him in there with that guy? My God, you know, he almost killed him. But then he went a little further, that linebacker kid hit him and stood over him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I did a real funny thing after that. You won't believe I did this. Hey, man, I'm trying to make you better. I said to that linebacker kid, I said, man, you lit, boy, you lit that kid up. You lit that kid up. He didn't know I was his dad. <laughs> You lit that kid up, man. You were awesome. Yeah, man, I lit him up. <laughs> I said to him, I said, boy, I tell you what. I remember when I used to play. And I said, man, if I could put on my pads, and, uh, and see if you can light me up. <laughs> and the kid was looking at me. I said, now you know that wasn't an advanced level player you lit up. He said, what are you talking about? I said, uh, there's a kid you're gonna play next week that uh, 
going to challenge you. And let's see if you can light him up. And I said, if I could turn the clock back a lot of years, I'd love to see if you can light me up. <laughs> then I had to move on. I <laughs> call the police on me at that point. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no doubt. So, so here, so, so always look for the challenge. Don't run from the, from the challenge. When the challenge shows up, don't bunker away. Don't, don't tuck and run. You know, you remember you're qualified. Hey, you're qualified. So when the challenge comes, I'm ready to meet it. I have the measurables. I have the experiences. I have the skill set. I have the objectives. And then lastly, know what guarantees you. I needed a guarantee when I played. They say in life you have two guarantees. I'm going to give it to them. I can guarantee you you're going to die. That's one. And the second one, I guarantee you you're going to die. <laughs> That's right. And uh, I felt very unique that the only guarantee I had was me. I was my guarantee. I can guarantee you I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that. I couldn't get a guarantee from anywhere else, but if I was going to survive in the National Football League, I knew that I had to have some guarantees because it was no guarantee I could make the team. It was no guarantee I would make that particular contract. It was no guarantee that I would become this all-pro player. But what I could guarantee is that I was going to outwork everybody I played with. And I always felt what was going to be my separator what was going to be my separator? What I knew between my ears and what I physically could deliver. And I hung my hat on those things. That was my guarantee. And I firmly believe that you've got to have a guarantee that you can count on something. There's something you can guarantee that's gonna happen, that you can cause to happen. It's a guarantee. It's not many of them in life. But I'll do this every day and twice on Sunday, three times on Monday, six times on Tuesday, 19 times on Wednesday, 22 times on Thursday, 46 times on, on Friday, 100 times on Saturday, 300 times on Sunday. I will bet on me every single day. I'll bet on me. That's my guarantee. I guarantee my success. And I stand here today as I close. I'm very fortunate to stand here. And I do thank One Life and Scotty and the entire executive team for the opportunity to share with you. You've been awesome. And I want to tell you that uh, don't ever stop climbing. Don't ever let today's successes cause you to settle. Never become complacent. There's always a mountain to climb if you're willing to climb it. And I close with a poem my, my high school or my middle school coach would always say to me. There were two quotes. I can give them to you both and I walk away. I share them with football, my football team at Tech all the time. I share them with teams around the country and places I go. And there are two things I'm, I care about a lot and I'm really known for and I share them all the time. You know, is that I will get up if you knock me down. I will get up. And I'll say, we gonna fight? Till we can't fight no more. Till we can't fight no more. We'll lie down and bleed a while. We'll get up and fight some more. We'll fight till we can't fight no more. Till we can't fight no more. We'll lie down and bleed a while. And we'll get up and fight some more. Then I said a third time, we'll fight till we can't fight no more. Till we can't fight no more. 
We'll lie down and bleed a while. We'll get up and we'll fight some more. And the final quote, if you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win and think you can't, it's almost a sense you won't. If you think you're losed and you're lost, for out in the world you'll find that success begins with a person's will. It's all in their state of mind. If you think you're outclassed and you are, you have to think high to rise before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger, a faster man or woman. But sooner or later, the ones who wins are the ones who think they can. At the end of the day, I'm going to tell you this now. I played in the National Football League with some big, nasty, ugly people. Tough, strong, powerful men. I mean, this man, my God, man. And I came to one realization. I broke that huddle in Cleveland for the first time. <laughs> twins right, twins right. Jet left. 37 blasts, 37 blasts, right? And I walked out and they screaming. And you can hardly hear. And I come out, I'm in the eye, attack them in my eye, standing back there, Scotty. And I got to play, and I'll tell you this, when I walked to that line of scrimmage and looked across at that defensive line, my God. <laughs> God. For a quick minute, I flinched. Whoo, you know, <laughs> throw some water on me. You know, man, I mean, I, I, you're talking big men? Oh my gosh. And then quickly I realized something. Oh my gosh, I realized something. The secret to my success. I realized something. You hit me just like that. Two things became a reality to me. The guys on my side was just as big. <laughs> big Bill Fralick. Oh man, what are you talking about? Boy, I have some big animals over there. I said, whoa, and then I double take the gear. Yeah, let's go. You know, and then the second reality hit me. Wait a minute, I'm just as strong and as powerful as they are. I'm one of them, how about that? And when I came to that conclusion, the next thing I need to hear was set hood. <laughs> Woo, and for you, get up every morning. And before you take off in your adventures, in the insurance business, and in all the appointments and meetings that you have scheduled and planned, and all the tasks that you have to accomplish and all the goals you've got to set for the year, for the quarter. I want to give you two words from the game of football that should get you going. Just remember, don't worry about the challenge. Don't be concerned with the realities. Don't worry about how big they are. Don't worry about how far behind you are. Just listen to the quarterback, get the play, trust your training, believe in your past, present, and future, and just listen out for said hut. Good night. <laughs>